भगवान श्री योगी राम सूरत कुमार की सर्वा योगी राम सूरत कुमार by one compassionate glance from the screen bhagwan we were able to sing his powerful name for the past one hour it was no small grace there could have been 100 excuses for not doing this yet those of us who are here were able to come despite any possible excuse because of grace so let us thank him heartily offering all this nama flowers at his feet every nama sankirtan session is a moment of celebration celebration of the glory of his nama now for the past few months we have been getting glimpses of bhagwan his own life and from the experiences of his devotees with him as i have said before the new paradigm is one leela a day keeps the maya away in one leela we come to know how the grace works and there's a teaching lesson and what's more the presence of bhagwan the vibrant presence of bhagwan it is prescribed as a sadhana by bhagwan whenever shrimati tilakavati rajeshekar came from madurai bhagwan would delight in her narrations of sundareshwaras leelas you should have seen his face how we radiated joy it's not the joy that we talk about in our life it was something beyond it. for him he was really living those leelas in acknowledgement of his original form the revelation to all of us he had declared time and again that all the 64 leelas of sundareshwara are this beggar's leelas now today we shall see how his grace worked and what we have to learn Dr. Saravana from Hozur been running a school. It's called Swati Matriculation Higher Secondary School. For the past 25 years, in 2000, it struck him to start. 
a state board school separately. And he bought five acres of land for that and even built the building necessary for the school. Now, the inspection from the directorate, they came and went through the school, the students, and they sent the file to the directorate. Now, Sri Saravanan thought it was automatic that they would soon get the recognition from the directorate. What happened was endless waiting. With the result, the examinations were fast approaching. He had even collected examination fees and paid. And the government took it. The government accepted it. Everything is over. The students were all awaiting the hall ticket. Just one week before, Sri Sharavanan got a doubt. He was wondering why there was no response at all. So he went all the way to Chennai to see the education minister. Of course, when he went there, the education minister asked him what the problem was. And Saravanan went into elaborate details of the situation. 145 students were going to give the 10th standard public examination. So much time had already passed, only one week more for the examination and they were yet to receive the recognition and the hall tickets. Just imagine for a moment the responsibility of Dr. Saravanan. He has bought the land, built the necessary rooms for the classes, admitted 145 students who were to appear for our 10th standard final examination and the recognition was yet to come. The inspection had happened, the files had been sent, but no response. What a responsibility, what a grave situation it was. He felt terrible. So when the minister asked him what the problem was, he poured out all the details. One thing, the whole family, Dr. Saravanan, his wife, Lavanya, are very much devoted to Bhagwan. In the other school, that he was running Swati Matriculation Higher Secondary School, the students were regularly singing Bhagwan's Nama. So when he felt the necessity for another board school and when he built it, he wanted to name it from one experience, one past experience of his, he would not choose any name for him by himself because in the other case, Bhagwan did not allow his name to be used. So he put two chips before Bhagwan's photograph, asking whether he could give Yogi Ram Kumar's name to the board school or it should be named, it should be given another name, some other name. And then when he took it, took one of them, it said, choose some other name, not this beggar's name. So he gave this name, Guru Dronacharya. 
School of Excellence. Now the School of Excellence had to wait with fingers crossed. Now the minister was very responsive. He immediately very carefully listened to all the details and Saravanan, right from the moment he started towards Chennai, was chanting, chanting, chanting Yogi Ram Kumar's name. He had no one else to help him with this great job. All the time he was depending only upon Bhagwan's grace. So as he put forth his problem, one man entered the room and it happened that he was the director of the school education. Imagine, he was the one Sri Saravanan had to meet that day. After meeting the minister, he had to go there and meet just this person. And here he was, entering. He was seated and immediately the minister gave orders. He signed the paper asking this director to give, to make the necessary arrangements for recognition. And then after signing it, the order, the minister was about to give it to the director. Suddenly, she Saravan got a fear. What if she should throw this paper in a corner, not work upon that? So he intervened and said, Sir, I would carry it myself. I would bring it to your office tomorrow. The director said, Okay, you come at seven o'clock itself to the office. I will do the needful for you. So the next day, Saravan took this order with him, was promptly there at seven o'clock at the directory. Little did he realize what was to happen. He simply trusted the director's word and waited there from seven o'clock. Soon it was eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve, one, two, three, four, and five o'clock. There was no sign of this director appearing anywhere. But he waited patiently all the time, chanting, chanting, chanting. It's a huge responsibility. Just imagine admitting 145 students, taking up the responsibility for their examinations. What would he say to the parents who trusted him? So he, is, he was desperately chanting and waiting. And five o'clock came, the offices were closed and people were starting back. And still, he would not lose his patience, nor the tiny hope. He waited. Six o'clock, and seven o'clock, at seven, the director came back. To his dismay, Sri Sharavanan was still waiting with the orders from the minister. So the director said, What, sir, what can I do? Tomorrow is the examination. And it is seven o'clock tonight. You are coming here and demanding this. What can I do at this time? I had to go supervising the examination arrangements in various schools. I could be back only now. I just cannot make any arrangement. Or can I give you any recognition? Then Saravanan almost begged him, saying, 
145 students, sir, they are all waiting with dreams and hope. You have to do something. So finally the director relented and said, okay, we can still do something. Maybe you can bring all those 145 students to Madras. We would arrange some school for them as a center. Then I would give permission for them to write the exam. Now she Saravanan was flabbergasted. What is this? What is he saying? 145 students had to be brought all the way from Hosu, which is near Bangalore. Bangalore to Madras. And where would they keep them? He had to make all arrangements for the stay and food and everything. What is this director saying now at the last moment? You can imagine his misery and hopelessness. He was crying. Immediately he just left the place. He went to a corner and phoned up to his wife. And just before that he broke down. He cried his heart out. He took out the photograph from his pocket, photograph of Yogi Ramasaritma Bhagwan, and said, Swami, what are you doing? At this late hour, what testing is this? Where would I go? Who will I turn to? Once Sri Saravanan and his wife had lots of problems and they went to Bhagwan. At that time Bhagwan told them, hereafter no problems for you. So Saravanan remembered that and appealed, begged Bhagwan, you said that day, hereafter no problem. And there is nothing but problem all the time. What can I do? Please help me, please help me. And then he realized the time was running out, so he made a call to his wife. He said, Lavanya, you have to bring all those 145 students. We have three buses, the school buses. Please bring them to Madras. Now it was Lavanya's turn his wife's turn to be flabbergasted. She said, what are you saying at this hour? Bringing all the children there to Chennai? And then she said, look, I have faith in Bhagwan. We are all chanting the name, all of us. There's 145 children, myself. We have been chanting the name and I have faith that Bhagwan would definitely help us out of this situation. You please go try again. What faith? Just when Sri Saravanan broke down, his wife Lavanya's faith was strengthened. This is also his grace. So he wanted, it was at that moment Something came in a flash. A name, Thambi Durai, came into his mind and then he decided he would go and see this person. This Thambi Durai was only a deputy speaker of the parliament. He held no responsibility in Tamil Nadu government. Yet, with faith in Bhagwan's grace, Saravanan decided he would resort to this last way out. So immediately he rushed to Sri Tambidurai, the deputy speaker. All the time chanting, chanting, chanting Yogi Ram Saratma Nama desperately. And to his surprise, Sri Tambidurai welcomed him, received him well seated him and asked about his problems. And then of course, everything cascaded from Sri Saravanan's mouth and heart. 
Shri Tambidurai. Shri Saravanan had his own doubts about Tambidurai also because he held no responsibility. He might not have any voice. In any case, he was just going to try out. It was a test for Bhagwan's grace. But then, Tambidurai immediately got wild that such a thing was being done to the students who were waiting desperately for the hall ticket. And immediately he took the phone nearby, called out to the director and started shouting. He said, what are you doing? You are expecting all these 143 students to be brought here to Madras? What arrangements have you made for this day? What arrangements have you made for their food? You said yesterday yes, and today you are saying this? Just listen. If the whole thing comes out to the media, what will you say? It will appear in the TV. The news will go out everywhere. This is what you have done. 143 students were brought to Madras to write the exam. And then he said, with determination and authority, now I do not know what you would do. You have to give him the recognition order and those students are going to write the examination in Hosur, not in Madras. And then he banged the phone down. So imagine Sri Saravan's mind at that time, he never expected Sri Tambidurai to act like this. He very clearly recognized Bhagawan's grace working. And because Tambidurai had, would not recommend easily, it's all pure grace of Bhagawan. And then Sri Tambidurai sent Saravanan to director, the office of the director. Immediately he rushed there. When he reached the place, it was 10 o'clock. 10.30 they started typing the order. 11 o'clock, the director signed the order. 11.30, it was handed over, the recognition order. The hall tickets handed over to Dr. Saravanan and thanking profusely Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarikkama, Saravanan reached at 7 o'clock, reached Hosur at 7 o'clock in the morning. He was very proud of his wife's faith, how she maintained it. And then he went to each of the students' house himself, handed over the hall ticket. Ten o'clock, the students were promptly present for the examination and they wrote. What could have been an ordinary event assumed such scales of proportion It was a mountain to climb and finally it happened, the miracle happened. When we go through this detail after detail, just imagine they've been chanting the name, all the students were chanting the name, his wife was chanting the name and he himself was chanting the name from the moment he started from Hozu and perhaps even before that. And yet, he had to go through test after test. He was stretched out to the extreme and almost broke down. And then things began to pick up. 
This is what happens to the devotees in many situations in life. I, I used to say jokingly when I was visiting Bhagwan for the past seven years, that, that uh, not for the past, uh, the first seven years when I was visiting him, there were many, many tests and tribulations. I would jokingly say, Bhagwan would throw the devotee up there and we would float up and up and up, higher and higher. And then we would begin to fall down. And just when you think you are going to 100 pieces, he would cushion you, he would hold you in hand and you would be safe. Just when you think you are going to break into 100 pieces, you would find yourself in one piece and dry it in the cushion of his hand. Why would God do this to us? There must be something. God who is the ocean of mercy. Who could be more gracious than God? We are all very selfish. God is the only selfless being. Why would he do it? We have to go through all these experiences. Bhagwan said often, whatever happens, happens only by the will of God. And whatever happens is necessary for our spiritual growth. And God is perfect and therefore whatever he wills is also perfect. And coming from God, whatever happens can only be a definite blessing. Had this not happened this way, had it all been easier, we would never realize the glory of grace. It's only when you walk miles in the hot sun, you will be able to appreciate the shade of a tree. So to be able to appreciate the grace of God, the invocation has to be very strong. And for the invocation, you must keep on chanting the name. That's the only thing that we do, chanting the name and praying. This morning I was telling some of the friends here, God is the greatest businessman. You know, you go to any shop, if some object that you want to buy is 1,000 rupees, you give him 900, 950, the shopkeeper would refuse to accept it. He would not hand it over to you unless you pay the full price. God is cleverer than all of us. Unless you give him the namas that he expects from you, until the last nama that he expects from you, he would not yield easily. So all this nama chanting, desperate chanting of the name, seeking out grace, begging, begging, begging. Ego goes down and down. It's almost crushed. And then the grace flows. So let us remember the statement of Bhagwan, the teaching of Bhagwan. Whatever happens, be it a joy or sorrow in life, Whatever life brings to you is what God has specially and specifically willed for you, for your spiritual growth. In every event, in every occurrence of life. 
spiritual growth must happen because the aim of life is God. God is our only goal and that's why God has given us this body, put breath in this, given us a life to lead where we could work out our past karmas and each one event, each one detail of our life must push us towards God. So when we know the secret of suffering, it would be easier to reconcile to that. Bhagwan used to tell me, Devki, in whatever situation, Father puts this beggar and you, we should not only accept it as His grace, but be grateful to God for it. Even acceptance takes quite a preparation of mind. What to say of feeling grateful to God for it? But then, that's what is demanded by God. Complete, total submission to His will. Now this Bhagwan, who helped him out of the situation, who, been, who has been helping people out of situation after situation in life, is pouring his grace, pouring his blessings. He's here right in front of us with a smile on his lips and Abhay Hasta, I'm here to give you refuge. Don't fear. Just think of me, chant my name until I grant you your prayer. Keep on chanting. Don't lose heart. So that's what we have to do in the present day situation of the world. We know a tiny virus which cannot even be seen except in a microscope is holding the whole world in its dreadful grip and we can't do anything about it. Nine months have passed, now they are trying out a vaccination. It's only a trial. Bhagwan should make it work. So let's pray to him. Bhagwan, please cast your compassionate glance upon the whole world. Remove the panic from the hearts of people. Arrest the spread of the disease. Enter the vaccination. This vaccine, the vaccination drive is on. You please enter the vaccine and make it work. It would not only kill this virus, but its variants, the whole family of this virus. And Bhagwan, please free the entire world from this grip, from this dreadful grip of this virulent virus and bring back normalcy. It is time the students went to the schools or colleges. It's time the office covers went to the office. So many good things have also happened, but still there is no normalcy in the world. People are suffering endlessly. And all those brave soldiers who are in the field fighting the disease against all odds. Please give them protection. And above all, the economy. It's in bad shape. Only you can give a boost to this and support all the steps taken towards its improvement. And we seek your 
huge grace for our constant remembrance of your name and to be aware that we are only instruments in your hands and that we should be good instruments in your hands to go about our life. Jai Yogi Narasimha.